So I have the pleasure, like DJ Davi mentioned, to, to introduce you guys to an amazing actress. I am currently watching A Million Little Things, and we'll, we'll dive into that when I bring her on. So let me go ahead, wait no further. Let's welcome up Stephanie Shostak. Thank you, DJ Davi, for the Come good on. vibe. The Thanks, good vibe. Alan, for having me. <laughs> No problem, Stephanie. It was a good vibe. I saw you back there jamming. I saw you back there grooving. She was. I know. You got your Just love sure. shirt on. Come on. That's for you. That's for I you because you're it. all about love. I'm all about love, baby. That's what we do out here. That's the best way to live, Stephanie. Like I, I feel that you know when you see people that you don't even know and you can look at them and have a genuine love for them, like that's the kind of person I am. So. And it. Shows. I can tell you're like that too, right? <laughs> Uh, she's like, no, I can be I mean... the biggest bitch on earth. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I didn't want to say that about you, but I mean, that's what I heard. I'm just playing. So <laughs> no, I think no. That, that's good when, when you're able to have an open heart. It's yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know you're cool people. So, you know, I haven't heard any bad things about you. So that's a good thing. <laughs> so Stephanie, like the pandemic has been going on for the last two or so years and, you know, everybody's lives change as an actress. Like how did that impact your life? Well, that impacted my life uh, because I was on a show, A Million Little Things. It says mm -hmm. I'm currently on it, but I'm not. Yeah. Uh, so when the pandemic hit, uh, the show basically a few months after that got picked up for season three mm -hmm. and a, all of a sudden doing the show looked a lot different than what it had looked before because mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of uncertainty in the world. Mm -hmm. We didn't know what was going on. I have kids. Uh, the kids, the school was remote. Mm -hmm. uh, the show was shooting, is shooting in Vancouver, and oh. I live on the east coast of the United States. And there was a mandatory quarantine for two weeks, which meant I couldn't go back and forth anymore. Yeah. So that's you know, it was your your show is called the Purpose Pod, and yeah. my purpose was really clear that I needed to be with my family. Yeah. And so it meant that I couldn't do the show anymore. Oh and wow! That's how so. I changed. mean, like, how does that? I mean, you brought it up. I don't know. I I didn't know the logistics or the ins and outs to this because I'm currently in season two. You know, so I, I started a little late in the game, and I'm glad I did because I feel like I I found this this new prize. You know that I that I enjoy watching, and you know all of you, you guys do such an amazing job. You know, in Thank this you. series, so. Um, so how does that work? Like you're like a main, I mean, like I said, I'm in season two, so maybe things happen, you know, down the road, but how does that affect the show? Like, does the show not go on since you can't be in there? No, the show, well, you know, that's the great thing about being in an ensemble show is that it's all these stories, these human stories of different yeah. characters. And it started with the, the, my character's husband, uh, dying by suicide. So mm. I was maybe a little bit in the, the center of, of the focus there, how to deal with it, but it was really yeah. all about all of us and all of our stories. Mm. So the show yeah. kept going and yeah. keeps going right now. Yeah, you're right. It, it does. And I love the way, like when I watch film, I don't know what it is about me. Like, I don't know if it's the engineering side, but you know, I've also done like some um, extra roles and like uh some cast calls and stuff like that right. uh so you know i did it was just i don't think my part ever made it so um <laughs> but um, i've had that happen a lot your part gets cut a lot yeah and i, and I would i'm definitely going to talk about i'm definitely going to talk about that too um you you've had to go for no in a sense um in this industry but i i just realized like when i watch shows i'm like breaking it apart like okay how is this actor feeling right now when they're delivering this line and are they really connecting with the line? Are they really uh, embodying this character? And I see that with you, like you do that so well, you embody your character and you become that person, you know, and, um, you know, and you could tell when somebody's becoming that person because you're like, Oh, you, you did this or you did that. So, um, how do you go about doing that? How do you embody the character that you are, uh, screening as? Um, I, for me, I think everybody's different. For mm -hmm. me, I do a lot of work beforehand and it always starts with, 
um, bringing it to myself. How can I relate to this character? Mm -hmm. And then after that is imagination and creating memories mm. and making it real so that, yeah. you know, and also the great thing about TV is the you, you're working with, with a lot of other actors and mm -hmm. in uh, this case really great actors so once you get on set there's a whole new reality that gets added to it and you're just reacting to whatever they're giving you and it's all yeah. about connecting yeah is it ever like a surprise that you know do you guys know the whole plot like how everything is going to play out or are you just going line by line in a sense um, well, you you get a script at a time, and a lot mm -hmm. of times you don't know what's going in the next what's going to happen in the next episode. But sometimes yeah. they give you a little bit of clues, you know. So if there's your character's mm. going to go through a major change, at least that you can prepare a little yeah. bit. Yeah. But so, yeah, you, yeah, it, it's kind of like in uh, in life, you you mm -hmm. plan. You sort of know what the game plan is going to be, but it's never what you expect. And you Come get on. Surprised. Yeah. Come on. You're talking yeah. my story, girl. I'm telling you, like, that's so real. Like, it's, you can have, you can try to have a game plan. You could have, you can have this idea of how you are going to behave in this role or whatever role you are as a mother, father, um, sister, brother, uh, a business owner. You know, um, you have this idea of what you're going to do, but you never know what kind of plot twist will come along, you know, in this storyline, right? So what what have you been able to like look at your roles that you've played and say, oh, this character reminds me of me in any way? Yeah, e every role. And that's yeah. kind of the cool thing that acting um, has, you know, taught me. I came into it really late at like mm -hmm. age 30. Yeah. And the more I studied and the more I... Um, looked into myself the more you realize oh we have all these different sides mm. uh, so it how it, it you know even the darkness it makes yeah. you uh, look into yourself and maybe you mm. didn't know you had that part but come on, yeah. come on poet <laughs> <laughs> i mean because that darkness is real stephanie and i know it's highlighted a lot in a million little things and if i bring up a million little things a lot uh i'm sorry it's just i've been watching it like you know, for the last two weeks. So, <laughs> but, um, but you know, that, that the darkness to life and, uh, they highlighted like suicide. And as you mentioned, your husband in the film, uh, you know, he goes, he's like the first thing you see right there is bam, like suicide, you know, is, is, is brought in. So this dark side, you know, to life, like, are you, I know you've gone through some, some darkness as well, um, so what is what is your mindset like when you're entering into a film and they're talking about suicide, they're talking about depression? Does that ever, you know, connect with you? Yes, absolutely. Um, I think we've all gone through darkness or know mm -hmm. people who've gone through uh, through darkness. I, I I've been sort of, um, you, you know, I've never dealt with depression or mm -hmm. um suicide or anything like that but i've had people very close to me who yeah. have dealt with things like that so mm. uh, but i think the more seasoned you are the more you're able to reconnect with those things and go into them but not also make them I mean, dive in and let it affect you too much like yeah. be able to separate from the art and and mm. life yeah uh but i i love to have the to have art as a place to explore all of these things. And mm. because even in life, I think no matter what the level of darkness is, the darkness is trying to tell us something, mm. you know? And yeah. so if you, if you try to skim over it or bury it down, it's going to catch up to you. So it's good mm. to look at it and be like, okay, well, why is this happening? And wow. there's a lot of parallels yeah. about acting and, yeah. and, and life, which is kind of, uh, of cool, you know. Yeah, I like I like that. I like how you're because I'm a poet, you know, and I I love the way you're describing things. I'm very visual uh, when it comes to things. So like the way you described it and like trying to uh, push darkness down and, and it's still gonna come up, you know. And um, I think about that a lot with my PTSD, with my trauma and stuff. Like, you know, I wasn't aware of the darkness until I brought it into the light and I started talking about it through my poetry and my words. So. What you said right there makes perfect sense. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So and then and then when you accept it, it can when you surrender to it, you know, then mm -hmm. that I think that's what allows you to move to move forward, right? Yeah. And it's yeah. true. Like once you surrender to it, I, I tell people like, does your situation have power over you or do you have power over your situation? Because you could be going through something um, or anything. It doesn't have to be traumatic. It doesn't have to be something to the state of depressing, but you, it could have you questioning your career, questioning, you know, what you're doing in life, you know, and at that moment in time, you could be overwhelmed with anxiety or you could have power over the situation and actually think like, you know what, I've been in this place or similar to this place before. Um, here's what I did last time. And this, these are the opportunities that are in front of me, you know? So that's what I, think. I, I love that. It's like, you're just sort of look at the big picture and assess what's going on. And then you're like, have I ever been through that something similar before and yeah. work from there? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Meaning Forge, what's up? Stephanie, love your story so far. Awesome. So, so Stephanie, he says, love your story so far. And I want, you know, I know I just jumped in and started talking about some stuff, but that's what I like to do sometimes, just to like kind of ice break, you know, just talk, you know. Um, <laughs> but going into that, you know, like you said, you you start off later, you know, uh in acting, right? Some people may say, Oh, Stephanie, she's probably been in the game for like 30 years of her life when she was like 12 years old or something, um, whatever it was, you know, like you did not start off like everyone else. Can you share with the listeners how your journey from golfing, you know, from college <laughs> and, uh, and modeling, like how did those things transpire into you becoming the actress, actress you are today? Uh, well, quickly, yeah, I, I went to school. I studied business because I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I thought mm -hmm. I wanted to be a social worker, but I studied business because I thought that might be the most more practical thing. Then I worked yeah. uh, in New York in New York City at Chanel in marketing. Mm. And that led me by chance to do a photo shoot, uh, which made me change path and think, oh, maybe I can do modeling and figure out what I really want to do. Yeah. And then from there, I took a theater class and and finally, I was like, this is it. I Boom. need to pursue this. I didn't look yeah. at it as a career. It was just really, I just need, I have to pursue this. Mm. Because for the first time in my life, I felt um, just connected. Is yeah. Alive. But mm. like letting all, letting all of it out through yeah. art. And that yeah. was liberating. Yeah. And I, and I wanted you to say something about that. That's why I asked that question, because like when you said when you connected to that, when you connected to acting, you 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 felt free, you felt like you found I would call it your purpose, you know, um, and you're you're able to express yourself in the best way. And I could tell that. OK, so marketing, eh, you know, she could do great like she could do great. She's great there. But like you shine so well as an actress, you know, and even if it was even like I don't know what the future holds for you or what you're planning or what you're planning on doing um, with that. But I know that like you've served a purpose and you've inspired somebody from France, somebody who is, uh, is, is an international student coming in and thinking like, Oh man, this is what I want to do, but I really want to be an actor or an actress. You know, they can look at you and say it is possible. And I love <laughs> telling people that it is possible. So did you think it was possible? Like, okay, so you're working at Chanel and, and next thing you know, you're you're in acting classes like did you think that where you are right now was possible uh maybe a little bit mm -hmm. Th there is a there's a little side i think that's a little delusional because <laughs> i loved it so much yeah but then there was you know you can i love how we can be in our head we can believe in ourselves and we can doubt ourselves all at the same time so I, I will say that i had both things yeah um um, and also but what, you know, I had a really strong French accent, mm -hmm. stronger than now. And people said to me, you will never be able to be on TV with that accent. You won't oh. be able to play anything but the French exchange student. Mm. Uh, a lot of, you know, people I knew were like, what the hell are you doing? You're starting yeah. to, you think you're going to be in Hollywood? <laughs> yeah. But when you find something you love so much you just mm -hmm. you just do it come on and, and again it wasn't with an end in in um in sight it wasn't about mm -hmm. being on tv or and it was just like i want to act i want yeah. to learn i want to explore i want to keep doing this yeah 
And I, I love that attitude and I love the action behind the thought. Like a lot of people think like, oh, this is not where I want to be. And they know that they want to do something else, but they're afraid of making that decision. They're afraid of taking that step. Like, do you have any advice for people in that in that phase right there? They're they're like they're working, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're 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 doing good, but there's something else out there. And it doesn't matter about the pay. It doesn't matter about, you know, the accolades. But that's where their heart is pushing them to. Any any advice for those people? I don't know about advice, but I think if something, if you feel a passion for something, just keep on exploring, keep on learning, mm -hmm. uh, connect with people who do that thing. Um, there and with the internet, there's so much uh, out there that you can learn from you know, podcasts yeah. and just listen to, I, I love listening to people's journeys and yeah. that inspires me and, exactly. and helps me discover, Oh, they did this. Maybe I can do that. And yeah, just exploring and learning and taking classes and mm -hmm. seeing if, and then along the way, you'll see yeah. if you should keep going or not. See if it sticks, right? Like just do the necessary steps and see if it sticks you know, that's yeah, what I like thought about. You started your podcast. Exactly. You know, I was about to say you that. just started it. <laughs> I just started I started it. the freaking boob story. The boob <laughs> People story. are like, what are you doing? Yeah. I'm just starting it. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. And that's what I, it's funny. I was going to transition into that next when I talked about <laughs> France. Um, but I was going to ask this one question. So I don't know if this is right. I took French in like middle school a long time ago. And they said, uh, my teacher was like, Tolve si vous play. What was Tol the first part? Toluve, Toluve. Toluve. I don't know. Like turn around. How do you say turn around? Ah, tourne, tournez-vous. See, I wasn't even paying attention. I thought she said Toluve. Si tournez-vous, <laughs> s'il vous plaît. What were you talking like? In I was like, yeah, I was the guy. Yeah, that's all she used to say. And I, I might have remixed what she said in my head because yeah. I wasn't paying attention. Um, Toulouse, yeah. s'il vous plaît, sounds good. Toulouse. So it's how do you say it again? How do you say? Tu. Two, 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 yeah, two, two, you just had the first part, two, and then two, 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 yes, thanks. See, I had the first part, I heard her, you know, and then I just <laughs> so I've been telling people that wrong this whole entire time. I think I even wrote it in a piece of mine, but um, anyway, so <laughs> so boobs, boobs in France, you know, talking about boobs in France and talking about boobs in. I thought you were like, <laughs> I was like, no, Stephanie, this, you told me, you said we could talk about this. Um, <laughs> so talking, talking about boobs in France versus talking about boobs in the U S like, it's so different. You know, um, anybody sees a woman breastfeeding or anyone like has a Janet Jackson moment on TV. It's like, <gasps> right. Um, so could you tell us about, you know, the boob story and like your story, you know, with boobs. <laughs> That's so interesting because, okay, for disclaimer, I haven't lived in France forever. So whatever right, right. I say is, you know, from me growing up there. Yeah. <laughs> but it it's so funny what you said, the Janet Jackson moment. Like yeah. I, I was like, so what nipple? Like we, I grew up in magazines. There were every advertisement was a naked woman. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. And, but the reason I started the boob stories is because one day I was on a set and my character had been brought up, brought to like, um, she had to be sexy. She was coming into her sexuality and that was mm. the way she was going to free herself. And so all of a sudden I'm wearing padded bras and like, you know, big things and yeah. big chicken cutlets stuffing my bras. <laughs> and I was like, what's it, what is it like for young girls growing up nowadays? Yeah. And there's a lot of talk about body image and mm -hmm. self-love and all different body types. And there's no talk about boobs. And, yeah. um, you know, in, in there's also a saying in English, the bigger, the better. Mm -hmm. And in French, we have a saying that's plus c'est petit, plus c'est mignon. The smaller, the mm. cuter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, you know, all boobs are beautiful and beyond yeah shapes and sizes our boobs are incredible mm -hmm. and they go through milestones with us mm -hmm. from puberty to uh, sexuality to being becoming a mother to nursing to aging to yeah 
cancer and um they go through transformations and reinventions and yeah you know all, and i thought it would be so great to just open up the dialogue for mm -hmm. young girls and show our collective stories from budding to sagging yeah come on and and uh, so uh, I created a, I, a friend of mine, a comedian called Natalie Wall, and I mm -hmm. wrote a poem. Instead of being called, Oh, the places you'll go, it was called, Oh, the titties you'll grow. <laughs> right. That's good. And it, and it was about a young girl who was buying her training bra and got sucked into a mirror. Mm -hmm. And she goes to this universe and sees women of diff at different stages in their lives that yeah. tell her sort of what they've gone through yeah. and uh, my other friend Debbie Lelievre did some amazing illustrations mm -hmm. and as we showed it to people and talked about it a lot of people shared their stories and yeah. I thought that was really powerful and uh, I was like that's I need to collect these stories and hopefully maybe one day will be a coffee book with mm, come on. you know all the milestones yeah because in the end when I read when you read these stories yeah um what you realize is no matter how different our journeys are mm -hmm. we just all long to uh accept ourselves and mm -hmm. and be accepted yeah and 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 really accept whatever life throws at us yeah and so I think so that's, that's huge. That's the project. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's I think that's huge. And that's an untapped market. You know, um, you know, when you hear breasts, you think of breast cancer awareness and, you know, like you don't really put the stories to it. Like, who are the people behind the boobs? Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. The people behind the boobs. And it's real. Like, I, I think I read one. Um, I don't know if she was from Germany or um, but she talked about when she uh was when she was like younger she didn't have much breasts and then like when she had a child like and then she's breastfed in front of her friends and like people are like oh my god right like and she felt the way she felt like she said i really missed that time i really missed you know the way i felt you know during that time and you know as i reflect over my life as a young boy and how girls were always so like you know some girls would get picked on for being flat chested or other girls would get picked on for having too much breast, you know, and, and it's like, well, who's deciding what's what, you know, and I know that, you know, people who, you know, sex sells in a sense, and they've sexualized women's breasts. So um, now you have women who are just some are depressed, some are upset, some feel like they have to get work done. And others are in that phase where they're now understanding the full spectrum, but then valuing themselves. So I, I love that. That's beautiful. Thank you. I want you to write a story, Alan. You want me to write mine? Mine would have to be my belly story. Uh, no, just what you said. That's so oh, cool. As a oh, man, like a that? man's perspective. I oh, love okay. that. Yeah. <laughs> I can do that. I can do that. You know, and, yeah. I, and it's, it's, it's cool because, you know, um, with my daughter Lola, like one day she's going to grow up and she's going to be a young lady. And I have to, as a dad, be able to uh, be someone she could be you know, she could confine in and like talk to me like, OK, you got your mom, of course. And people think, oh, go talk to your mom about that. That's a girl thing. But, you know, women also go through things where they have guys judging or looking at them and treating them certain ways. So I think a guy understanding that story is is beneficial for everyone. So important. My dad yeah. played played a big role like that. It was yeah. my mom was amazing. She was my mom. And but it was great to have a father to uh, talk about. Yeah. Things, like and get the perspective of a of a dad. Yeah. So yeah. I mean that's pretty cool, you know, and I, I hope that you do turn it into like a coffee table book, you know. Um you got you got so many things you could do there. You can you can go ahead and direct your your own film or documentary and you know, you could document the lives of women around the world. You travel, you know. So that's your, you like to travel, right? So that's your You said uh, you know, the thing about being on different sets is that you get to travel, right? Yes. So that's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah, the adventure of, of discovering a new a new city, a new country. That's yeah. a big part of what I love about acting. Yeah. So so within all of this, you know, with acting and the boob stories and meeting different people from around the world, how have you like defined yourself in the midst of all of this? Like what people say about you, you know, oh, you're a French, you're from France. Like the only thing you can do is an exchange student. How did you find that value within yourself? 
Um, I think I just, I came to a point, it's a good question. <laughs> I came to, you know, I, because I started late um, in acting, I sort of had a fresh perspective and I had nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning, when I started working, I was just in love with it and finding joy and taking risks and just diving in it. And yeah. then as the roles got bigger um, and I found myself on big movie sets with big movie stars, all of a mm -hmm. sudden I started doubting myself and mm. the f being green wasn't so much of an advantage anymore in my, in my own head. Yeah. It just felt like, Oh my gosh, I don't fit in. Yeah. Um, and it really affected my, my self-talk. Um, I just was uh, judging every mm -hmm. take I would, you know, when I was on set, I would judge every take I was going through and, and, and yeah. I became consumed by what people were thinking. Mm. And um, to the point where it impacted my performance and my my ability to perform and be free. Yeah. And so I think I was just trying to, you know, talk myself out of it, like get it together, which yeah. is sort of what I've done. My what I did all my life uh -huh. before that was talking, like you know, being a negative reinforcement, like yeah, you know you you jackass get it yeah. <laughs> and that You're didn't work down. anymore yeah yeah and one day uh i had just booked i had just been on a new movie mm -hmm. uh started a new movie it was um called r.i.p.d you probably didn't see it but yeah, it was big that. big names i'm yeah. in the rehearsing and it's kevin bacon mm -hmm. jeff bridges ryan reynolds yeah. and beginner me yeah. And um, we're just rehearsing. Everybody leaves, takes a break, and it's just Kevin Bacon and me mm -hmm. in the room. And it's silence. You know, he's studying his script. And so I, I just turn to him and I say, hey, I just wanted to say I thought you were amazing in The Woodsman, which yeah. is a, a small movie he did where he played a pedophile. And it was an mm. amazing performance. Yeah. Um, and uh, a courageous performance. And he yeah. really brought humanity to the character mm -hmm. um and he turned to me and he said oh my god thank you so much not too many people press play on that one mm. and um and then he goes oh my gosh i'm such a mess i didn't sleep i always get like this yeah uh before i start a new movie wow and i was like wait what <laughs> you're kevin bacon yeah you're like the big you know we've yeah. been in so many movies, they have a, a game after you. What's your yeah. bacon number? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but it, I think when I did, when that happened, I was like, oh, I guess it doesn't matter how successful mm. you are or how much experience you have. Yeah. Um, there's always going to be fear when we start yeah. something new. That's true. And that really helped me. And then on that same movie, uh, I went, I, I was taking the train back and forth from Boston to New York mm -hmm. and I went to the bookstore and there was a Deepak Chopra book called the seven spiritual laws, the laws of uh, success. I think yeah. that's what it was called. And I picked it up. You know, I think sometimes you just pick up things when you're mm -hmm. ready. Just go with I didn't know anything <laughs> about Deepak Chopra. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, and, and, you know, it's nothing new in that book. It was, it, he talked about gratitude and, mm -hmm. and non-judgment and, and um, accepting the gifts of life. And, all. and for some reason at that moment in my life, it really spoke to me. Yeah. And um, I think you asked, you know, what, what did I do to find my purpose? I think that mm -hmm. was sort of the catalyst that really yeah. Uh, started me down the road of exploring within and mm -hmm. and and uh, just discovering what really mattered to me, what was important. Yeah, and and eventually sort of have a compass that helped me mm. in 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 figuring out what the next step is. Does it yeah. align with what I'm about? And 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 it's okay to be afraid of what other people think. That's mm -hmm. always going to be there, but. Yeah. Not get consumed by it. Come because on. If, if you're doing your own stuff, then mm -hmm. you're good. people are always going to have something to say too. Like when you're, I think when you're in this journey called purpose or life or whatever you want to call it, 
you know, um, people are always going to say something. And there's like you said, there's always going to be fear. And I'm so glad that you shared that because, you know, a lot of people, you know, like I just went and spoke at the school. You asked how that went. I was so nervous. Like, I'm just like, oh, my God, this is about to be terrible. Like, <laughs> but I knew like I knew that I could do it. I knew that I, I had the ability to step up and do it. But like you said, that negative thought like, oh, no, like it's, things aren't going to work out. You know, um, so to know that it doesn't matter where you are in the spectrum of success, you know, in life, people face fear and you have to face that fear. Um, so I, I think that's a beautiful thing that it's a testament. Every time I see you on screen now, I'm just going to think about the times that you've overcome fear to be in that 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 scene, you know, um, and it's huge. You know, you've you've done so much. So that means that you have faced fear so much. But it, but still, we 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 haven't learned how to like completely defeat fear because it always comes back. So, it's... <laughs> but I don't think we should. I think fear is good. Like I yeah. was nervous. Come on, talk about it. I mean, well, fear is good because it tells you <laughs> you're about to do something you care about. Come on. You know. I, did you tell me that? I think somebody told me that. I don't know if you. No, I think somebody told me like Alan. It's a good thing you're afraid because that means that you really care about this thing. Yes. Um, oh. I I, you you know, did, right? You know, okay. I was like, somebody told, told me, me that. You, you told me that. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I think somebody told me that. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's that's an awesome thing. And, um, you know, I, I'll continue to fight fear, uh, you know, because it deals with my purpose and where I want to go in life, you know. Um, so do you you feel that this, I feel like this this energy I get from you, this this vibe I get from you is you like to keep, you know, kind of to yourself in a sense, but you could be an extrovert. Are you an introvert extrovert? I'm an introvert. So I definitely get my energy back from being alone. Yeah. Uh, but I think I'm a social introvert. Mm -hmm. Like I, I love people. I love to get out there, but then I, it uh, that depletes me of energy. So then I need yeah. to be, yeah, on my own. Yeah. <laughs> and and that's What about you? Me, I, I'm an extrovert, but... But lately, due to the pandemic, you know, I've just been with my wife and my, my daughter and then some friends here and there. Uh, usually I'm like with family and then all my friends I'm hanging out all week. Like, that's what I was. But um, now I feel like I value time when I get time to spend time with people, <laughs> you know, versus spending time with people all the time. So, right. But yeah. I love my personality though because I could if I met you like if if I never knew who you were and we were both in the elevator and we were the only ones on the elevator, you know, and we were going up a couple of flights of stairs, I would have started a conversation with you instantly. Oh, love, love your shirt. Oh, that's amazing. You know, um, what's your name? Where are you from? So I'm that kind of guy. So that's what I like to do. But we we're talking about this this inner self, this energy, and we're talking about how we manage to fight fear and a lot of people face fear and then in turn face traumatic experiences and in turn need therapy right so spinning on to our given our ambassadorship <laughs> yes. so so can you so stephanie and i are with given hour and i've been with given hour for about a year now how long have you been with them well, I met given hour when the show a million little things started because mm -hmm. my character his husband died by suicide mm -hmm. and Barbara Van Dalen was a consultant for ABC and for a million little things because mm. the show, you know, talked about suicide and depression right. and um, she came on set. And so she's the founder of Given Hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so she came on set and that's how I met her. Yeah. Um, I went to her because I'm fascinated about, you know, mental health. Mm -hmm. um because of what i went what i my journey yeah. but i think also i i had an older brother who um was uh you know my hero he was eight years older than me and he never mm -hmm. quite fit into this world yeah um he dealt with uh drug addiction he eventually mm -hmm. got cleaned he was a rastafari that's why we played yeah. reggae before yeah. this mm -hmm. um and so and and I wanted to be a social worker in college yeah. be, to, to to sort of help people like my mm -hmm. brother. Yeah. And so anyway, I went to talk to Barbara. <laughs> yeah. And just I wanted and and we really hit it off. And then mm -hmm. we had lunch in New York City. And um then uh I did the the campaign to change. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
you're frozen. campaign to change. Yeah, Am campaign I? to change direction every year with them. Yeah. And then when um and then we spoke last year about the 180 playbook yeah. concept mm -hmm. and and so that's how I reconnected with them really on a more um uh direct you know not related to the show and they started yeah. the ambassador program and I was like hell yes I love yeah. what you do what they do is incredible yeah uh they help veterans and military for people who don't know and mm -hmm. also uh victims of man-made disasters or natural mm -hmm. disasters they go in communities throughout the United States and do a lot to to help people yeah yeah And I did hear, so I was like I said, I was I just got into season two, and I remember the, uh, your daughter was going, your play daughter was going on a run, and that's when this other lady came up, and uh, I think she she was like, oh yeah, you know something about giving our marathon. I think she mentioned like a marathon, oh, yeah. Or, yeah. So I was like, oh snap, I heard giving hour in there. That's cool. <laughs> yes. So yeah, that's that's pretty cool. So I, I think that's awesome. How you know we meet people along the way in our journey. Like I met you through given hour and now we're interviewing on my podcast. I think that's awesome. But I, I just, I pay attention to where I'm aligned, you know, and, and who's aligned. like you said, like, is it aligned with my messages? Is it aligned with my values? Right. I think it's amazing that you are able to connect with people in that way. And it leads you uh, to this place. So like the 180 playbook, you know, it almost sounds like a football team, you know, um, it, it sounds like a football plan, you know, like the 180 playbook this is what we're going to do. We're going to, you know, flea flacker. <laughs> <Whatever>. <laughs> so so with the with the 180 playbook, you know, growing up and, you know, uh, fast being fascinated by the mind. Right. Like so. So how did this concept become? Well, the it, the concept was born from, you know, doing all this work like we're we were talking about mm -hmm. um, exploring and coming across messages that you, when you come across them, you're like, Oh my God, yes, I love yeah. this. I'm going to remember mm -hmm. this forever. Yeah. The, the fact is we don't remember these things mm -hmm. forever. So the idea of a playbook was just a, a central location to keep all these anchoring thoughts mm -hmm. that help me get into the right frame of mind. Yeah and um and start each day with that yeah. because you know one one thing that i learned from so many people was how you begin your day has such an impact on the rest of your day and most of us start our day just diving right in and turning our mm -hmm. phones on and boom getting all the outside noise and that mm -hmm. shapes that shapes our mood there mm. shapes our awareness of how we see the world and Yeah, it gets us sidetracked, and so mm -hmm. the idea was really to have a place to put all this stuff that would help me do a 180 on my mm. frame of mind on. when I needed it. Yeah, and also my this, and it was actually my husband's idea, and, and he came up with the name of the 180 because he was like, "It's the opposite. It's not yeah. social media. <laughs> it's private media." Right. Come on. And, and I love, and so I, I we. I created one and um, yeah. started my day before I would go on set and, and it made the, uh, the huge difference. Yeah. And That's you know, people make fun. Did you watch your little slideshow this morning? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, I did. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I don't need my coffee. I need my 180 playbook. Yes. Um, I, I think it's, I, I love uh, being a part of that because, you know, there were, like you said, I was like, Oh yeah, I'm a, I'll remember this, you know? And then when I get into a situation, like I'll bring this to mind. But it wasn't like that. Like there were quotes, there were different things about my day before that I would uh, take take down, write down like things I, I value, gratitude, right? Things I'm grateful for. Like you said, those anchoring thoughts. I love that you said that, the anchoring thoughts. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so on this journey called Purpose, you know, and we, we're building our 180 playbook. Uh, what kind of anchoring thoughts do you have like in your playbook You know, um, like a, like a, two things or so that you kind of make sure you bring back uh, the next day in the morning, you know, to start your day. Uh, what's well, personal? <laughs> oh, yeah. My, give me some. No, no, no. For the what kind? <laughs> um, what kind of anchoring thoughts? Um, there's, um, you know, one one thing is some of the moments that you overcame. Mm -hmm. Like just being reminded of that, like you said earlier, 
when you're in a dark moment and mm -hmm. you're like, oh, I've gone through this before. So in my 180 playbook, I do have some, maybe a picture or something that reminds me of, of something hard that I overcame. Yeah. And then, you know, I see that and I'm like, okay, okay. And I have um, also, this is, I took a course on mindset mm -hmm. uh, by a sports psychologist called Michael Gervais. And he, he spoke about developing a personal philosophy Yeah. And so with your values yeah. and, and so my personal philosophy is in there yeah. reminders to, you know, go outside and, and mm -hmm. enjoy nature to yeah. reminders to be silent. Um, That's a good one. Yeah. Like and, and highlights also. And, and, you know, there's pictures of, of, you know, people I'm grateful for, but mm -hmm. the thing is, it's almost, it's 180 seconds and, and yeah. it's, it's a slideshow and there's music. And so you watch it and all of it together just makes you, mm. when you're done, you're like, yes, you're reminded yeah. of what's important to you and how you want to show up in the day. But even, yeah. you know, I, I, like you mentioned, the pandemic has been really hard for people. And I know mm -hmm. a lot of people whose kids are having a hard time and they're in therapy and mm, yeah. um, just even in, when you're in therapy, you get your therapist will tell you to work on something. Mm -hmm. And so those, those thoughts, it's like, Oh, right. This I need to remember. That's yeah. in, you know, yeah. I'm it doing helps that for therapy. you. To, yeah. You, you, do you write your notes after? Yeah. Um, I'm supposed to, I, uh, <laughs> I gotta get better at that. I procrastinate so much when it comes to that, like therapy. I told them, like, don't give me any homework. And they're like, well, you need homework to do therapy. And I was like, ah, OK. But yeah, I, I have I have stuff written down on my phone mostly, though. Yeah. So that's exactly that's what it is. All the stuff that a lot of us have written in our notes. Yeah. Just put it in a nice, nice format. Yeah. So we, we'll challenge the people who are listening and those who will listen in the future. Like we challenge you guys to make your 180 playbook or just make sure you guys are being intentional about noting things that give you positivity, that make you feel good, that make you think better and feel better. All right. And uh, y'all make sure y'all let Stephanie know how that goes, you know, if you're <laughs> doing it. OK, because it's, it's important. It's so important. Like it. Some people go out here and they plan to have a bad day because they they failed to plan their day or at least how they're going to engage their day. Um, so I, I at least try to go outside. I, I at least try to appreciate the weather, no matter what it is. And then I at least value seeing other people because that means that I'm alive and I have my eyes to see. You know, so um, I really look at the little things in life in a sense because I, I value I, I value people smiling, like Stephanie smiling. I, I value that because she could be upset. She could be sad. She could be depressed, but she's able to smile. So um, we have to value those little things. And All no, no pun intended on a no, million no, little no, things. No, no pun intended <laughs> on a million little things, but that was that, you know, I was, I don't know, maybe that was stuck in my head. So, yeah. Thank you, thank you. So yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that's awesome. You know, like in like a million little things, like I keep bringing it up because it it hits home to me, like the way people's lives are happening, you know, in the show because we fail to realize that, oh, Stephanie could be going through this and Alan could be going through that and Sarah could be going through this. Like there are so many people whose stories are, they're bonded together, but everyone's going through something different. But you know, what they're going through impacts the lives of those around them. It's powerful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah. So your husband, like how how has that been with you guys in your acting career? Um, I, I know the pandemic kind of slowed things down, but how are you guys able to juggle, you know, you traveling um, to the West Coast, you know, to do work? Um, it was, it's, it's brought a sense of adventure mm -hmm. to our life, which is kind yeah. of amazing. Um, you know, it's also, I think, uh, I was, as a parent, when I my kids were younger, I was really uh, structured and mm -hmm. the rules and bedtime and all yeah. that. And the first time <laughs> I had to go away, I was like, oh, they're not going to go to bed on time. <laughs> I was actually talking not. to my dad about that. And yeah. he was like, so what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And he was like, and it's going to allow your kids to have a different relationship with their dad mm -hmm. than when, if you're there. So it's been 
amazing. I'm so lucky because I have a man who supports what I do and kids who support what I do. Yeah. Um, whenever we make a decision, whenever I, I, I make a dis I have a job offer or something, we make a decision as a family, you know, yeah. we include the kids. Um, uh, it's also brought a lot. It's brought challenges and it's brought mm -hmm. great opportunities. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's made us uh, do things that we, I, I would have never imagined. We went mm -hmm. to Atlanta for, you know, we moved all together for a few months. Yeah. And that was amazing. Yeah. Uh, and then cool. I went to Vancouver. I went to LA. It's, it's, yeah. it's great. That's cool. And that's that's good that you have a strong anchor at home yes. while you're out there living in your purpose and chasing your dreams. He sees the vision. Um, it reminds me of the um, what's your best friend? The care, the one that the the one that owns the restaurant with you or Christina the Moses, yeah. Regina yeah, Christine, in the show. Yeah, yeah, Regina in the show. Like that's something that had to happen between her and her husband. Like she wanted to be a chef, and you know he wanted to leave his job, and so like there's this this thing where we have to see as people. And just looking in your life, you know, if we want something and you're married, you know, like speak it, let them know. And um, if you're the other spouse receiving it, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of them living their dreams. I think that is so powerful. I really value that because me and my wife, we got some plans over here. We are nice. here planning, you know, so <laughs> we are here planning. So what what's one of your like major goals right now where you are, like after everything you've accomplished and we we have to remember those things, right? We can't just think about like, oh, this is where I started. Oh, I accomplished all of this and here I am. No, like you have to really soak in um, the accomplishments, even the no's. But where where are you headed next? Like, what's next for you? Well, I don't know if it's it's not official yet, but I, I do have a job that I'm going to work on very yeah. soon. Uh, so but I don't know if I, I don't think I can say it's not. I don't know if it's official. So say, I'm wanna, very excited about it. Yeah, I don't want to get sued, <laughs> uh, Stephanie. Acting, you know, I, I hopefully I can keep on acting for forever. Yeah. And um, so that's really cool it's gonna and it shoots in new york city hey Come on. hey <laughs> hey if they need an extra extra uh just yeah. you know, let me know but um <laughs> no i think that's you know when when it comes to like the scene life like i i don't know how you guys do it i don't know how you guys do it every day because i mean maybe that was just for me as an extra like having to wait so long and oh, you yeah. guys you know being the main characters like you guys could really be on set all the time but like as an extra like it was like waiting, 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 and then you know, um same. It's later. not glamorous. People think, ah, oh, <laughs> it's, it's so glamorous. Yeah. yeah. And you do the same thing over and over again. I yeah. was an extra too. I yeah. was an extra on a Woody Allen movie. Yeah. Um, Woody Allen. Yeah. Yeah. So so what do you think made that transition for you? Like, what do you think made you stood out? Like you know, in the times where you've gotten the yes, like, what do you think it was that, what was that it factor for you that they, that you think they saw? Seriously? You want <laughs> Just, me to, th 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 come on, I'm not the one who can say. <laughs> come on, Stephanie, you know, they, so even with a million little things, like, why did they choose you? I can't, I don't know. You have to ask You never them thought about that? I didn't ask them. And, and, oh. and even if I did, they would give me some bullshit answer. You never know. <laughs> because we love you. We think that you're awesome and amazing. No, I, I think, I mean, you're perfect. That was a perfect role for you. I had message. Uh, you ever, you, have you ever heard of a uh, Maya Stolian? Maya Stolian? No. See, she's an actress as well. She golfed in college. Um, what? Actually, yeah, she was on my podcast like last year or a year ago, or whatever. But she, she, so she's in been in some stuff with Omar Epps and like Nia Long, and uh, it's, it's it's a bunch of different things. But overall, I messaged her earlier and I was like, "Hey, Maya, do you know Stephanie?" She's like, "No," and I was like, "Oh, I was like, I would love to uh, to introduce you guys because y'all are in the same field and you you both come." She's from like Czech Republic, and you know, mm -hmm. so like it's it's. It's and she golfed in college also? Yeah, she came here and golfed in college and stuff. So that's crazy. Um, I'm I'm gonna make the connection with yes. both of you. So that'd be pretty cool. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. So <laughs> yes, and, and so with this like see this moment capturing the moments on set and in life, right? Uh do you feel that there's something challenging you to to capture or to seize like the moment on life and on set or is there like a easy is it easy going for you is it easy for you to just flow 
uh, in life and on set, like never having to go through like depression and stuff like that. Is it is it easy? Like you making it, you making me feel like it's easy. No, oh my gosh, it's the, the reason I do all these things. It's because it's not easy. <laughs> not easy. It pains me. <laughs> it's not easy. Um, I yeah, I constantly have to remind myself. Some days it's easier than others. Some days yeah. you wake up and you're like, hey. Some days you wake up and you got body aches and you're yeah. getting older and you're to, you're thinking of your to do list <laughs> and you feel like your mind is racing from one thing to another and yeah. Um, that's why I do all those things that I do is to make it easier, yeah. you know. Yeah, and I and I, that's good. It, the little the little habits I will say mm -hmm. go really a long way for me. I I start yeah. my day. I I, I meditate and mm. I journal and uh, and it's not to give me a pat on the. <laughs> you yeah, know, it's just because it's not easy. And when I when I skip those things, I really mm -hmm. notice it. Yeah. So, so, so Stephanie, let me ask you a question. Cause I, I've me, studied, I've studied, I study people sometimes. Right. So yeah. do you struggle <laughs> with, I guess, uh, giving yourself props? Like, do you struggle with like saying what you do and like really just being like, yeah, this is what I've done. This is who I am. Like, do you struggle with just like doing that? Yeah. You do? Cause I, I've watched a couple of interviews. I was like, she keeps like low, blowing, low balling herself. Like, yeah, I'm just. Anyway, so what do you guys want to talk about outside of me? <laughs> well, I've made real progress because actually, I had a therapist once who told me you yeah. need to learn how to say thank you if somebody mm. pays you a compliment. Yeah. And because I would always make like ah, you know, and make a joke. You don't know me when I do that. And he was like, yeah. you need to learn to say thank you. <laughs> Well, I'm going to be watching you for that. So I'm going to make sure I keep an eye on you to make sure you're saying thank you in interviews when people say, oh, you're a great actress. Oh, thank you so much. I, I've worked so hard. I've come a long way. That's what you should say. <laughs> well, you know what I realized? I, I think actually it's just, just you say thank you for not what they're They're just giving you, you know, paying you a compliment. And so yeah. you just say thank you. It doesn't mean like, oh. I'm ready for I a take, speech. Yeah, I believe <laughs> this. or Yeah. So, so no, with, yeah. so, I mean, that's good though, you know, but, and, and you know who you are, you focus on this self-discovery and, you know, being authentic, you know, um, is that you've, have you had to wrestle with that in your acting career, like being authentic and like just staying you, no matter what yeah. people would say about you? Yeah, I think, I think, uh, for the, that's why I, act, I loved acting so much was because mm. at the beginning I felt like I had been wearing sort of a mask my whole life and being, mm. you know, the, the, good, the good daughter, the good girl doing what I was supposed to do. So yeah. acting was like liberating. I could play these crazy characters. <laughs> and, then it, and then when I got, you know, on those bigger sets, all mm. of a sudden, again, that same thing. Yeah, you know, and we say we bury things, and, and then they come mm -hmm. back to haunt, haunt us if we don't yeah. address them. So that same thing came 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 back up, and I was all of a sudden uh, looking at other actors and being like, "Oh, she's doing that. I should do yeah. that. I should." Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. and then eventually, I realized, no, I just got to do what me and yeah. and I think what helps at me in acting and, and in life, maybe when those moments, when you start is, it all comes from trying to control the moment and being mm. afraid of not, of the results that it's not going to be good. And yeah. if you're just able to, for me, if I'm just even physically, if I just, just like open my heart, like, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen next. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know what's going to come out of my mouth. I don't know what's going to, and that, there's beauty in that. And that's yeah. when the magic happens, even yeah. in acting. That's sometimes, you know, you'll do a take mm -hmm. and you surprise yourself. You're like, I didn't, I don't know where that came from. And that's <laughs> so amazing. Yeah. And I think in life, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. Like, I think when I go and do my speaking engagements, I really, I lean on like believing in myself and believing that I will do the right thing. Um, it was it's funny like when I was uh, presenting at UNC Charlotte, my my presentation wasn't working, and I'm like, you know, I'm pressing the clicker and like oh, like oh the presentation doesn't work, 
And I was like, man, so what am I going to do? You know, am I going to fold or am I going to perform? Right. So I literally was like, I have to perform. So let me do the first thing I, I think of, which is relate, connect to the audience, you know, connect to the audience. And it really it paid off in the long run. So, you know, I, I think I could be a good actor one day. You know, um, I might uh, take you up on, uh, you know, acting sometimes. So you just let me know if you get a role that requires a, a black veteran male with gray hair. <laughs> all right all right i will yeah. and, but you said it all connect to the audience and i think that's yeah. what it is is connect to other human beings yeah amen amen yeah. sister <laughs> do y'all do they go to church a lot in france like is there is it it's catholic church right there's no like baptist southern baptist church mm -mm. out there yeah france. the main religion is catholic but i'm jewish i'm not religious yeah. but i grew up you know Jewish, which there's yeah. not that many of us in France. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, um, yeah. So, but my mom, my mom converted to Judaism, Judaism. Mm -hmm. So I've mm -hmm. been to a lot of churches with my uh, mom's side of the family. Actually, yeah. I have a funny story for you. Tell me. <laughs> when yeah. I was about three, I was in church in Italy because some of my family is in Italy. Mm -hmm. And I kept hearing Je Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And so I asked everybody, who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? <laughs> who is Jesus? And finally I went, but who is Jesus already? <laughs> <laughs> did they, what did they, did they put you out of the church? Yeah, they took me. I was oh, kicked out. <laughs> You got to go. You can't be in here. It's so orderly probably over there, like in Italy and like, you know, like yeah. it's probably like really structured and everything has to be a certain way. Right. Yes. Everything's yeah. more formal over in, in the old continent. <laughs> yeah. That's 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 awesome. One day I'll take my wife and my daughter over there. Uh, you know, one day. I don't know when, but we're going over there one day. Uh I don't, I don't know. I don't even know why I want to go. I just want to go because of the movies, I guess. You know, and the movies made it like everybody talks about France and they make Italy sound beautiful. So I just want to go. It but, is um, beautiful. You, you <laughs> get a start in Paris with your start wife. In Paris. Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll take her out there. Might come back with Simmons number two. But um. anyway, so, <laughs> so my last question for you, Stephanie, is what do you want your legacy to be? Uh, I, I'm working on it. I'm too young to say that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you, so you, you still trying to figure it out? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think, uh, I know I'm fishing here, but do you think, <laughs> do you think it would be something related to, you know, um, your acting or would it be related to our boob stories or would it be related? Do you, do you think those will still be in the, the future? You know that you'll you'll still be pushing those things. I you have know. no idea. I yeah. I think it would be less maybe about a specific thing and more yeah. about oh, hopefully just from the people you yeah. know the closest to me yeah. and the way we we led our lives together. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. Like, I mean, I, I try not to like get into the oh purpose i have to like think about purpose 24 7 i have to think about my legacy and what i want out of life and you know like and then really just be in the moment and be with my family and just be in in the state that i am right now instead of like thinking about the past or the future so i understand i rock with that i like that oh, i right like and i think also we're all different some people yeah you know will be like this is what I need to, and that will drive mm -hmm. them. Yeah. I mean, there are people like that. I've, I've had people like, this is what I'm going to do. This is the great masterpiece that I'm working on, you know, yeah. but I, I love, I love your answer. It's real. It's authentic. It's like, look, this is, I don't know. It's going to be something like, I know what it's going to be. I know it's going to be dope, you know? So <laughs> <laughs> I think it will be. So I know, I know you're going to do great things, Stephanie. And I'm just looking forward to uh, just seeing you on the big screen more and more. I'm, I'm can't wait to finish up you know, this series here with a million little things. Uh, I, I can't wait for that. Um, after that, I'm expecting some books to come from you. Um, right. Uh, so, so we're going to some documentaries, you know, you're directing film now, like something like that. Right. So we'll see how that works. <laughs> Thank yeah. you so much for having me, Alan. And, no and I look forward to doing some good stuff for given hour together. 
Definitely. I, um, I'm definitely looking forward to that. I'm so glad given our connected us and I'm so glad you said yes to the purpose pod. And I'm, I'm really just thankful for you. So, uh, do you have any last words for the audience, any encouraging words for the people out there who are striving to say yes to their dreams? Any, any last words for those people out there? Keep on exploring. Come on. She's so sweet. <laughs> keep on exploring. You better keep on exploring. I love that. Yeah. Hey, I got to bring you to like a Southern like church, like a, a you know, a, a black church, like not to convert you or anything, but just so you could like get the vibe of like, yeah. I think you would really have an amazing time just like people watching. So I'm yeah, <laughs> I went, I went to church back church in Harlem a couple oh, yeah? of times and that okay. was amazing, but never in the South. So oh, yeah, you got to come to the South, Gary. You got to go to the South. I would love just to try it out. Just do it like a little, uh, uh, a little trip. Uh, what is it called? Um, a little site trip right there just to see what's going on so stephanie just hang out in the background for a second okay and i'll be right there with you i'm gonna close out and then i'll come back there and uh right. chit chat and then we'll go okay so everybody okay. stephanie show stack <laughs> So thank you guys and gals for tuning in to another episode of The Purpose Pod. I am your host, Alan Levi Simmons, and I hope you all enjoyed that episode of The Purpose Pod. Amber, thank you so much, my little honey bunny. She says, great interview. And meaning for us, thank you as well. I know DJ Davi mentioned he had a question for Stephanie, but DJ Davi, you did not send it to me. So I'm sorry. But let me give a quick shout out. Let me give a quick shout out to my previous guest on The Purpose Pod and my boy DJ Davi. Let me also give a shout out to Petty Gigs and Given Hour. This is an old flyer, but this is Given Hour. This is what we are both ambassadors for. So please make sure you guys go and check out Given Hour, support Given Hour. And also check out Stephanie's website. Like, it's amazing. I was just on there. And um, I had a video that I wanted to share, but it, it I, I didn't want to mess up nothing on here. But um, it, it's amazing. So you guys, I'm about to put up her website right now. And you guys just make sure you go check out her website and share your boob story. If you have a boob story, even if you're a guy, share your boob story. I might go in there. I want to, I'm going to create a, create my belly story thing. Cause my belly's seen transformations over the years, Lord. All right. So, <laughs> and make sure you guys tune in in two weeks to another episode of the purpose pod, purposely driving you forward with power and love. So that was Stephanie Showstack. Once again, make sure you guys go follow her. This is another episode of The Purpose Pod, purposely driving you forward. I am your host, Alan Levi Simmons. Peace.